Today, front page news about the national shortage of HRT. You see their HRT crisis putting women's lives in danger. The government has appointed a special czar responsible for dealing with this crisis, which some experts have warned is so bad it could lead to some women losing their jobs, marriages, or some even being led to take their own lives. I mean, very serious stuff, Jane. We talk about the menopause a lot here. And I know this is happening to a friend of mine who lives in Wiltshire literally driving around to every pharmacy she can find, trying to get HRT. What is the problem? Why is there a shortage? Um, well, there's a shortage because of um, supply, and that's because demand has gone up. And I suppose, in a way, we can take off our share of the blame yeah. for that. I mean, I think we really first talked about this very openly in 2015. Um, one of the first programmes to do it. One of the very actually. first programmes to do it, because it was one of those taboo subjects, and here we like to tackle those taboos, and we talked about it a, a lot. Um, and in 2017, so, for example, there were 300,000 prescriptions, and now there are 500,000. Wow. So this is great. Awareness has gone up. More women are realising that, actually, I don't have a problem that someone's prescribed me antidepressants for mistakenly in many cases, um, it's the menopause. And so they're much more aware, but the producers have not quite caught up with the demand, or a lot of them. I mean, there is quite a few prescriptions still available, but Estragel, for example, <clears throat> the gel, they've got a big problem with that, and, and women are literally going to car parks, uh, handing over money to people to, to get it. So, of course, there is a big problem, and um, the government has appointed this... HRTs are. Some people are saying, do we really need an HRTs are? Can't we just, you know, we've known for a very long time this is this is a problem. I remember three years ago not being able to get my HRT. Um, but it's good that they're doing it. They're treating it like the vaccines with Kate Bingham. It's, you know, let's have somebody whose sole job it is to get as many vaccines out as possible yeah. and they're going to appoint somebody that's going to do that with HR. Well, Sajid Javid has said, it w I will urgently be convening a meeting with suppliers to look at ways we can work together to improve supply in the short and the long term. So it's yeah. not just now, is it? Yeah. it? It's going forward. And you can understand women, you know, who have really, really bad symptoms. You know, I... I on. Um, uh, replacement hormones, but I, I've never had really horrendous symptoms. I'm very pleased to say it has affected me. Um, but women who literally have walked away from yeah. jobs, who have walked away from marriages, it's, and it does affect all your relationships, actually. Because I, we were talking this morning about, you know, did you have a moment where you thought, I think I really need to go and talk to the doctor about mm -hmm. should I be looking at HRT? And mine was, I had a moment with, with Jack where we were supposedly clearing his room because he was having it decorated or something, and he wasn't pulling his weight, and I had a complete overreaction, like, screaming at him. And I remember running out of his room, slamming the door off between our kitchen and, and the upstairs that's got glass in it, so I thought, that's going to break. Ran up to my bedroom and threw myself on the bed and cried like a teenager. Mm. And then it was like I woke up mm. and suddenly went, what just happened? I thought that was such an overreaction, and then I thought, I need to go to the doctor. So I think everyone's had those moments. Oh, well, you remember, um, you... I mean, Penny spoke about it on the show. She would come in in the morning meeting saying, I don't know what's wrong with me. And we all went, it's the menopause. Mm. Um, but in the meantime, she'd been to her doctor, as she said on the show, and they put her on antidepressants, thinking it was yeah. a, a depression thing. Um, and she came off the antidepressants and went on to uh, HRT and, and now feels a lot, lot better. But if it's been rising, surely they should have seen this coming, no? I just feel like well, if the numbers had already so. gone up and then they've gone up massively, surely they would have thought, OK, the, the demand is getting higher and higher, people are knowing about it more. I just feel like maybe they could have done something about it before we got into this yeah, situation. I think, and I th think that's what makes women feel, that we're not being listened yeah. to. It, it makes women mm. feel like it's the menopause important. is treated like, mm. oh, it's the menopause. Yeah. Yeah. Just have a few hot flushes, they'll be fine. Mm. When actually for... For a lot of women, it's very serious. You don't take... As somebody HRT, said today, if it was insulin, they'd be taking yeah. it. Yeah, if someone said to me, oh, we've run out of your antidepressants, I'd be like, OK, so what are you going to do about that? I would panic because my life would be majorly affected. Yeah. So I think, again, it's just people not taking it seriously. Yeah. Are you, are you on it at all? No, I don't take it. And initially, n and none of my sisters take it. Um, and I think, you know, I feel very blessed and very lucky that... You know, I have got friends who are affected massively by the menopause, like you say, with mood swings and depression. And 
And I'm very lucky that I haven't had those experiences. I've had the hot where I go, is anyone warm in here? And my kids go, no, it's just you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, uh, I've had that and I've had a bit of insomnia, which has affected me, but I haven't taken HRT um, and neither of my sisters, and that's because there was a link at one point to breast cancer, and obviously that's rife in my family. Uh, so that scared me off it a bit. And I feel that at the moment, touch wood, um, we can, I can cope with it at the moment where I don't feel I need to, to have mm. anything. But I'm just lucky. And my mum, you know, in her day, they didn't talk about it, so I don't really know. But yeah. there was never moments, even with my mum, where I thought, what's up with her? Why is she acting mm. like that? Um, so maybe, you know, maybe we'll just... But I said to you. Frankie this morning, we were all doing me, me, menopause, menopause, me, 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 And Frankie was very quiet, and I said to you, does this... I was interested, like, does this fill you with dread? Do you think, oh, bore off with the menopause? Mm. Or do you think, this is good, I'm hearing all this, so when it does come your way... Yeah. Many years from now, um, I think but... maybe all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think... I do find it interesting because, you know, it is going to be something that I'm going to have to think about at some point. And I never even... I'd never heard of perimenopausal. Mm. So if that happens to me, I wouldn't have known that that was a thing until coming on the show. So, actually, I do find it really interesting. But also, yeah, it does fill me with a bit of dread, I'm not going to lie. You know, if I'm like you, Colleen, mm. and only get it a little bit, then great. But I think as someone who already suffers from depression and things like that, I do often think, oh, no, is it going to hit me quite badly, but, you know, hopefully then I'll I, know what to look out for. Yeah. I think for me as well, because um, I just had the worst periods for my whole life, so I actually, from a very early age, was going through life going, I can't wait for the menopause, I can't wait for the menopause, because I just didn't want that mm. ever again. So at the moment, I'm still in awe of that I don't have to go... Because mm, yeah. it was terrible for me, that. You know, it really was debilitating for me. But I, I think if I was mm. your age, I would be happy to listen to yeah. it, because we didn't hear it. I heard snippets hushed. My mum and her friends kind of going... I remember this word, thickening up. I now know what she means. No waste. Um, you know, I used to hear snippets, because it was all about... She's going to <laughs> yeah, didn't they? They did. They yeah. didn't talk about it openly. But it won't be like that for me. No. And then people younger and hopefully, than me. Yeah. yeah. OK, um, well, let us know if you are being affected by, by the shortage of HRT. We don't want to cause a panic, and we know it's not everywhere, but we are hearing from some of you already that, that it is you know, having a problem um, getting hold of your HRT and let us know how you're feeling about it. Or did you say some, we've got someone already? No. Oh, here we go. Here we go. If I could open it, Here, it would help. I've got them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, technology. What have we got? See, oh, you Sarah. need me. I'm like your co-pilot. Thank you, you are, darling. Yeah. Um, Sarah, hello, I'll Sarah. Us all. She had one minute there happily <laughs> just giving them out as if they're sweeties. The next, you're just left to deal with it. It all adds to the stress, which ultimately leads to people just dealing with symptoms with no support. Is it me or is there nothing working today? It's probably today? just you. You know what, we'll come back. Sorry, we'll guys. We'll get those Sorry. working. But thank you, your comments are coming in thick and fast.